Good afternoon and welcome to the University of Adelaide graduation ceremony. This afternoon's ceremony is for graduates from the Faculty of Sciences, Engineering and Technology. The ceremony will commence very shortly um, and the university has a contract photographer to provide photography services during the ceremony. If you wish to take your own photos, I would ask that you do so discreetly and with the flash off. To maintain the ceremony's sense of occasion, please switch off your mobile phones and in the case of the emer an emergency, please follow the direction of staff members and ushers. The emergency assessment assembly point is the Goodman Crescent Lawns to the western side of Benython Hall, just out here, and the evacuation plan can be found on page nine of your programs. For safety reasons, guests are not to enter the galleries upstairs, and please do not step on the steps in the balcony area. Thank you all and enjoy the ceremony.
Thank you everyone for waiting. The academic procession will now enter the hall. We will be singing the national anthem and the words are on page eight of your programs. So please now stand for the entrance of the academic procession and remain standing for the national anthem. Thank you. I, Catherine Branson, Chancellor of the University of Adelaide, declare open this congregation, given for the purpose of presenting degrees. Distinguished guests, parents, relatives, friends, most importantly, those of you graduating today, welcome to the University of Adelaide's graduation ceremony. Ghana Miena, Ghana Yata, Nadlu Thumpindi, we recognize we're on Ghana land. We acknowledge the Ghana people, past and present, the original custodians of the Adelaide Plains, and thus of the land on which all of the university's campuses are built. We acknowledge their ongoing spiritual connection to this beautiful land. Graduation days are such lovely days, I'm sure you'll agree. Days in which everyone can be happy most people can feel proud either of their own achievements, of those of their family members or their 
friends. And the University of Adelaide is proud as well when we see so many of our fine students graduating and going out into the world to make f fine contributions uh, to their communities wherever they find they spend their lives. I suspect those of you graduating today have found the time, or if not yet, will soon find the time, just to think about what brought you to this place today, who supported you to be where you are, and then to think where your future will take you now that you have the qualification you've worked so hard to achieve. Wherever you go from here, I feel confident that what you've learned at this fine university, the knowledge you've gained, the skills you've learned, will stand you in very good stead wherever you are, not only professionally, but also in your private lives. I wish you well. It now gives me great pleasure to introduce today's graduation orator, Mr. Peter Siebels. I think Peter will allow me to say not only are we former colleagues on the Council of the University of the Adelaide, but that we are friends. I'm delighted that he's here today to speak to our students. And indeed, Peter reminds me, he's actually stood precisely where I stand today, performing the task that I'm performing today, when he was the um, chair of the, the University Council's finance committee. And indeed, he presided over the ceremony where his own son graduated. And he tells me what a lovely day it was for him and how moving for him and happy a day it was for his son as well. Peter is the current president and chairman of the Royal Automobile Association of South Australia. He's also chairman of MENS, a very important position. For those of you who don't know, MENS are the manufacturers of those great South Australian brands such as Fruitox and Violet Crumble. Um, most of us, I think, particularly the students, will have found them consoling during their years of study. Peter runs his own uh, advisory business known as 4D Advisory. And in addition to running his own business, he contributes to a variety of other investment, finance and governance board committees. He's including being the independent chair of Hood Sweeney and chairman of the Electricity Industry Superannuation Scheme. Peter graduated with a Bachelor of Economics, not from this university, we forgive him because he was living in Sydney, but from the University of Sydney. Peter worked for the advisory firm KPMG for 30 years early in his career, holding a number of senior roles with that firm, including being a member of the firm's National Executive Committee and National Board. He was also this state chair of KPMG for eight years. We're most grateful to Peter for the service that he's earlier given to this university. He was a member of council, as I've already mentioned. He chaired the finance committee, and he stayed on the finance committee when he ceased to be a member of the council. So Peter is a man who's been right at the heart of this university community. We're very grateful to him to his contributions to the university, and we're particularly grateful that he's agreed to speak to you today. So it's a privilege to hear Peter speak. Please welcome him. Chancellor, the Honourable Catherine Branson, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Dr Jessica Gallagher, distinguished guests, members of staff, all of those who have helped today's graduates, family, friends, supporters, and of course, to all of you, today's graduates. <clears throat> it is an honour to speak to you today in what is a major milestone of your life. In preparing for today, I had cause to reflect on my own graduation in 1986, 36 years ago, after completing my university degree in 1985. <clears throat> the world was a different place then, uh, as it will be in 2058, 36 years from today. This week, of course, the Reserve Bank lifted interest rates by 25 basis points, lifting home loan rates to a shade under 4%, 3.85% for one major bank. Back then it was 14%, and I'm sure many of your parents will remember that wonderful time, and it was going higher after that. So the world isn't ending. Fluctuations happen. Change happens. Today we carry a phone in our pocket 
that has more computer power than NASA had available to put man on the moon. We used to make phone calls from public phone boxes and feed coins in uh, a different world. In 1986, Mr. Gorbachev was General Secretary of the USSR, the Soviet Union, a global superpower at the time. <clears throat> then in a Cold War with the United States of America. Today, Mr. Putin leads a Russia personally obsessed, it seems, with recreating that Soviet Union and in the process creating a horrific war destroying the lives of many innocent parties in the Ukraine. We could go on and on, but I think you get my point. Things have changed in ways that we didn't expect and will continue to do so. In 2058, though, um, we may be in a global community with net zero carbon emissions. Wouldn't that be terrific? We may have communities living in space, thanks in part, I'm sure, to many of the wonderfully bright people in the audience about to graduate. We'll have, we may have AI and ro robotics that serve us like we can't imagine in our ordinary lives, serving the age, serving the ill, uh, picking fruit off trees, who knows? <clears throat> what I hope for most is that a planet where Mother Nature is respected, that we have forests and biodiversity today better than we, uh, sorry, then that we have today, if only. So what can you as graduates do to make the world and your lives better? I've always found that you talk about three key assets, I guess I'm an accountant by trade, but three key assets in your life. Uh, and if you look after these, you'll have fulfilling careers and hopefully happiness in your life. The first asset is knowledge, which of course is paramount to all of us and particularly you sitting here today. Today is a point in time though. It's not the end, it's not the end of the race. It's certainly worth celebrating and reflecting and acknowledging your wonderful efforts, but it's not the end of the, of the race. In fact, the job's never done. You must, from this day forth, build and develop that knowledge, foster its growth and renewal, if you like. I was actually very fortunate last weekend to, to attend the Berkshire Hathaway uh, General Meeting as an observer in Omaha, Nebraska. One college undergraduate in six hours of questions to two men in their 90s, which was astounding to watch, asked Mr. Buffett, what would he invest in, in a world of high inflation? What stocks would be really great? I loved his answer. Paraphrasing, he told the young lady that the best investment she could make was in herself. Learn to be the best of the area you love, in the area you love or you choose to, to embark upon, whether that be ballet, law or science. You see, he said, knowledge and expertise can't be inflated away. No, no one can take that from you. In fact, if markets, financial markets crash, you'll always have that knowledge. And in fact, as prices increase, your expertise and your worth will increase. I thought that was a, a wonderful response from, from clearly a very intelligent man. So lesson one from today, be thirsty for continuous development and lifelong learning. The second asset I want to talk about is relationships. Now, a lot of people use the word networking or networks. I don't like it because it sometimes gets blended with what is sometimes bland socialising. But when it's at its best, most meaningful, caring for others and building strong, genuine relationships, that's incredibly powerful. Whether that be with family, loved ones, friends, colleagues, leaders that you serve, your staff, customers, suppliers, or anyone in a body of influence or an industry association, those relationships are critical. Always respect others. Treat them as you'd like to be treated and listen to them, particularly with your skill, to help them solve their problems. Don't be transactional and move on quickly from relationships. If it's genuine and important, it is now very easy to stay in touch, so do so. People won't always remember what you say or do, but they will always remember how you make them feel. So remember that. You'll meet the same people on the way up, on the way to your pinnacle, as you'll meet on the way down. And be treated accordingly by them as to how you treated them. So the second message is care and serve others. Cherish, cherish and nurture relationships. The final and most important asset I want to touch on is integrity. You can never do the wrong thing doing the right thing. Of course we'll all make mistakes. You will all make mistakes. 
But of course, that's just part of learning. In fact, innovation demands it. It thrives when there is a culture of trying things, different things, potentially failing fast and learning from those mistakes. What is important, though, is that you're honest, own any mistakes you make and that of your team, and be accountable for that. You'll also get the chance at some point to take an easy path, to do something wrong for personal gain or pleasure. In these instances, try and be strong and do the right thing. You see, trust is the one thing that will bring you success and happiness in your lives. People who trust you will build strong relationships and strong bonds with you and be a part of your life and hopefully success for many years. Trust, though, arrives on foot and departs on horseback. It takes time to earn trust from some and it quickly dissipates if you make poor decisions and act inappropriately. So do what you can to earn the respect and trust of others every day. Try not to jeopardise that through any dishonesty or selfish action. You'll come across many who are obsessed with money or personal things. However, that's not the secret to happiness or success. So my final message of the three is treasure and protect your integrity above all else. So I hope today you can take one or two things uh, from today's address and treat those and, and those assets in a way that can bring the benefit to the planet, humanity, and serve along the way. So serve, care, and respect, and I'm sure you'll be uh, in the best position you can be, and above all, be happy. So where there is life here, there is hope, to, to quote the late Eddie Jakku. Thank you very, very much, and congratulations again on your wonderful achievements. On behalf of the graduates and the families attending today's ceremony, I would like to thank Peter Sibbles for his stimulating and inspiring address. We are honoured that you've taken the time to join us here on this special day to share with us your thoughts and experiences. Your words of encouragement and advice are greatly appreciated. They remind us that education places upon each of us an enduring responsibility to make the best possible use of our talents and to contribute to the betterment of society in whatever way we can. Please join me in once again thanking Peter Sibbles. I will now receive the candidates for degrees. I call on the Deputy Vice-Chancellor External Engagement. Chancellor. I, Dr. Jessica Gallagher, Deputy Vice-Chancellor External Engagement of the University of Adelaide, certify to you and the whole university that the graduates who will be presented to you have all fulfilled the conditions prescribed for admission to the award for which they are so presented. I, Catherine Branson, Chancellor of the University of Adelaide, by virtue of the power committed to me by the university, confirm that each graduate is admitted to the rank and privileges of a holder of the award in the University of Adelaide for which they are so presented. I call on the head of the School of Chemical Engineering and Advanced Materials, Professor David Lewis, to present the graduates. Chancellor, I Head of the School of Chemical Engineering and Advanced Materials, Professor David Lewis, present to you graduates from the School of Chemical Engineering and Advanced Materials and the Australian School of Petroleum and Energy Resources. To the Honours Degree of Bachelor of Engineering, Anis Yassim Soria Amin. John Arevalo. Chaitanya Bandari.
Lacey Jade Burston. Iris Menke Chuck. Suhao Chan. Also receiving the degree of Bachelor of Finance, Sahil Chalani. Zimeng Sean Chu. Angus Daly. Jacob Louv Deng. And I Elphick. Kritika Gupta. <laughs> Na Chun Li. <laughs> also receiving the degree of Bachelor of Finance, Lara Hilao. Hun Duke We Nguyen. Lewis Patrick Jones. Jai Kalawik. Jeremy Wei No. Andre Brock Lyman. Also receiving the degree of Bachelor of Science, Nicholas Marcel Macram. Leon Andrew McCullough. Connor Aaron Menz. Tu Hong Nguyen. Ni Dang Ali. Lam Lian Fun. Samuel John Paniri. Wafi Shoka. Danielle Scafo. <laughs> Ryland Carl William Schottler. <laughs> Zarin Tasnam. <laughs> also received the Bachelor of the degree of Bachelor of Finance, Jack Charles van der Jurt. <laughs> v. Hoi Wen Nguyen. <laughs> also receiving, and also receiving the degree of Bachelor of Science Biotechnology, Ji Wang.
to the Honours Degree of Bachelor of Engineering and Bachelor of Science, Dorsa Jazanani. Katarina Koston. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Petroleum Engineering Science, Li Long Yuan. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Petroleum Engineering, Inkarat Turirat Tan the Beauty. To the degree of Master of Materials Engineering, Gerlin Singh Sandhu. <laughs> to the degree of Master of Engineering Chemical, Anitha Mary George. <laughs> Jayuan Pan. and Pranjali Mohan Suhani. <laughs> to the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Hydrothermal Liquefaction of Biosolids, Yasin al -Bajori. <laughs> for a the for a thesis entitled, A Novel Approach to Reservoir Simulation Using Supervised Learning, Shadad Gashem Sadeh. <laughs> For a thesis entitled, A Study of the Analytical and Diagnostic Potential of Fiber Optic Surface Plasmon Residence Extraordinary Optical Transmission Biosensors, Tai Tao Li. For a thesis entitled, Improving the Accuracy of Geomechanical Predictions in Sedimentary Basins, Matthew Mark Mussolino. For a thesis entitled, Analytical Models for Managing and Predicting the Performance of Mature Water Flood Reservoirs, Daniel Ian O'Reilly. <laughs> Chancellor, this concludes the graduates from the School of Chemical Engineering and Advanced Materials and the Australian School of Petroleum and Energy Resources. Chancellor, I, Interim Head of the School of Architecture and Built Environment, Associate Professor Catherine Barch, present you graduates from the School of Architecture and Built Environment. To the degree of Bachelor of Architectural Design, Bailey Adams. <clears throat> Xavier James Barnett. Emma Boucher. <laughs> Ka In Chan. <laughs> Yi Kit Samuel Chin. Zane Cliff. <laughs> Remy James Dubois. <laughs> Raya Yasmin Ernst. Catherine Emily Fitzmaurice. <clears throat> Ma
Gao Ya. Carmen Grodosic. Wade Mitchell Hackett. Rose Dawn Henwood. Taylor Hu. Ke Yu Huang. Huang Yang. Karambant Kaur. Lena Querben. Shin Lu Lin. Georgina Mercorella. Matthew John Nader. Madeline Emily Oral. Anna Harvey Pickerskill. Raja, Marsha, Hazika, Raja, Iskanda, Mirza. Rion Thomas Roberts. Nur Shuhaida Binti Sideg. Joseph Fabian Standring. <laughs> Alistair James Teagle. <laughs> Mia Ru Mong Yuan Thorpe. Lin Ni Trin. <laughs> Fabian John Whiteman. <laughs> Yihan Yong. Zhe Wang Emmeline Yip. <laughs> Carl William Yon. <laughs> Joshua John Zilm. <laughs> and Thomas Rocco Zito. To the degree of Master of Property, Adepalli Dinesh Varma. <laughs> Serwen Bai. <laughs> Munish Balusu.
Wan Pik Jalan Kwok. Chen Zhe Liu. Richard Suhas Hartbeck. Zhejuan Young. Li Zhang. Chi Zhang. And Haiting Zhu. To the degree of Master of Planning, Urban Design, also receiving the degree of Master of Landscape Architecture, Rachel Ann Catherine Stupos. To the degree of Master of Landscape Architecture, Isabella Bales. Also receiving the degree of Master of Architecture, Caitlin Grace DeProse. Also receiving the degree of Master of Architecture, James Wilton Gillette. Wei Song Guo. Yaru Hu. Also receiving the degree of Master of Architecture, Eleanor Jane Hughes. Also receiving the degree of Master of Architecture, Nadia Jamal. Also receiving the degree of Master of Architecture, Mitchell Andrew Lobb. Also receiving the degree of Master of Architecture, Sally Rowett. Also receiving the degree of Master of Architecture, Caitlin Holly Roy. Yeah. <laughs> Twinkle Sharma. And receiving the degree of Master of Architecture, Olivia Victoria Solomon. To the degree of Master of Construction Management, Abdur Rahman. Anaslin Alias. Siddhar Aurora. Gajalakshmi Balasubramanian. <laughs> Ranak Shishkiri Badalanki Rao. <laughs> Kavita Harshuram Bandari. Sunny J. Prakash Bhatt. <laughs> R. 
Arkashneel Bhattacharya. Xingqian B. Ashish Bilimagga Sidesh Vara. Himasundar Boganadam. Arkash Chaudhry. Divya Pratap Singh, Digpal Singh, Chauhan. <laughs> Muyur Yogesh Chauhan. <laughs> Dev Pradeep. Parth Ramesh by Damelia <laughs> Liam James Fitzgerald <laughs> Shilvant Dayavant Gajgate. Minu and George. <laughs> Vishal Rambai Godania. <laughs> Rithika Gupta. Hansika Benkatareddi. <laughs> Samva Hasturga Visvanath. <laughs> Ajmal Hussein. Puja Jayaraman Ayer <laughs> Angel Eberichukwu Aike Osuji <laughs> UG Nabil Ahmad, Shakil Ahmad Kadri. <laughs> Jayesh Babulal Kanani. <laughs> Bavishika Kurana. Aman Kumar <laughs> Limamo Peng Longkumer <laughs> Rushida Marisetti. Vargis Matthew <laughs> Shreyeshta Mistra <laughs> N 
Nuruddin Muhammad. Twinkle Pravinbai Panchal. Parth Deepan Parik. Daheria Patel. Palak Vijay Kumar Patel. Parth Jagdish Bai Patel. Yung Thai Pham. Suyog Vilas Pimplay. Purnesh. <laughs> Danush Pradeep. Arnav Raj Singh Rajput. Navian Ramapurath Nambiar. Sanjay Ramesh Kulkarni. Sveta Sangwan. Nainil Praful Sankei. Yogesh Mukund Sarang. <laughs> Gaurav Saunar. <laughs> Sapna Sebastian. <laughs> Kazi Shadman. Vebhav Vijay Shah. Rishab Kumar Sharma. Shalin Sharma. Anand Narendra Singh. Mantej Singh. Mohit Singh Suyogi. Crystal Ann Tomenio. Sorab Opadhyay. Jose Luis Vargas Miranda.
Abirami Vijay. Arjun Vijayan. And Rupa Vijayaragavan. To the degree of Master of Architecture, Christopher Brian Abinoha. Hugh Adair. Yasaman Aklagirad. <laughs> Jeffrey William Adams. <laughs> Samir Barakat. Jan Jun B. Chi Chen. Chen Xinyu. Serena Chen. <laughs> Yu Chen Dai. <laughs> Michaela Derringer. Connor Gavin Dyer. <laughs> Jiyu Fong. <laughs> Harrison Laban Gale. <laughs> Tao Hu. Shubashini Ravindran Ayer. <laughs> Razia Jawad. <laughs> Ku Chi Kiet. Shaoja Li. <laughs> Yucheng Li. <laughs> A Chen Liang. <laughs> Han Chi Liu. Connor Elliot McClure. <laughs> Kevin Peter Miller. <laughs> Edward Ezekiel Amondi. Claire Judith Mansell Oxenham. Darcy Wade Richardson.
Renee Amy Schulz. Monica Stankovic. And Braden Jack Townsend. To the degree of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Holistic Investigation of Robotically Assisted 3D Printed Cob Walls from Fabrication to Environmental Impacts, Mohammed Sabri Radwan Mohammed Goma. And for a thesis entitled Incorporation of Embodied Energy into Building Energy Efficiency Codes, a Pathway to Life Cycle Net Zero Energy Building in Australia, Hossein Omrani. <laughs> Chancellor, this concludes the graduates from the School of Architecture and Built Environment and for this ceremony. Chancellor, every year the university presents university medals to acknowledge the most outstanding graduates in each faculty who have completed a University of Adelaide bachelor's degree with honours or a bachelor's degree of at least four years duration. The university medals are awarded to them for their consistent outstanding performance across their entire undergraduate studies. I, Dr. Jessica Gallagher, Deputy Vice-Chancellor External Engagement of the University of Adelaide, present to you the recipients of the 2021 University Medal from the Faculty of Sciences, Engineering and Technology, Jeremy Wei Un Lo. <laughs> and Leon Andrew McCullough. I'm now very pleased to present to you Eleanor Jane Hughes, who was presented this afternoon with the Master of Architecture with Master of Landscape Architecture. Eleanor will now give the valedictory address on behalf of the cohort of graduates who are presented with their awards this afternoon. Hello, everyone. When I received the email saying I'd been chosen for this role, I was very humbled. But then it came to what the role actually entailed, a speech. Now, for those of you who know me, you know I don't often shy away from a speech, most of the time when it hasn't actually been asked for. But in this particular case, I felt completely stumped. Firstly, because let's face it, most of you are just hanging to get out of here, give your loved ones a big hug, and sweet talk them into giving you something to eat. Second to that, my experience at the university has been a bit of a whirlwind, to say the least, with euphoric highs and some pretty frustrating lows, and I know I'm not alone in this experience. So to be asked to write and speak about it in a completely positive and uplifting light felt a bit disingenuous. To kickstart my speech writing process, I went straight to the people that had been the absolute highlight and one of my biggest gains from my university journey, my uni friends. I asked them if they could send me some of their favourite memories from my time at uni. I was completely inundated with responses, photos, videos, stories. And as I look back on these memories, it began to dawn on me just how far I had come in my time at uni. So, in the spirit of keeping you all awake for the next couple of minutes, and to uplift us all, I'm, gonna, I'm going to dwell on just a couple of my fondest memories I made whilst at university, and recognise the people and opportunities that helped make them possible. I began uni as a timid, anxious person, and I stand here today still pretty anxious, 
but with an acquired sense of confidence and belief in my ability. As I reflected on these memories, I began to realize just where this growth had come from. See, when you study architecture and landscape architecture, you are pretty much opening yourself up to what feels like personal attack. Now, I know for those who are graduating from those degrees today, I don't need to expand on this, because I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for those of you who are unaware, I'll break it down. See, when you're designing, you're putting forward your own subjective take on a space, on how it could best serve community, work with the environment, benefit the existing built form, the list goes on. On top of all these elements, you are then presenting it in your own choice of aesthetic. Now, if that doesn't sound daunting enough, you are then asked to sell your concept to a panel of professionals in your field who have no idea about the hours, hours of tireless research and design you've put in. Through this repeated process of public presentation, we as design students learn to understand our projects inside out and be able to confidently and clearly articulate this in front of far more experienced and accomplished people. Now, I think my best example of this would have to be back a couple of years ago. It was the night before my 21st birthday. Uh, we had a major project due the next day, and my friends and I had conceded that we would probably have to pull an all-nighter to finish in time. It was nearly midnight, and I was standing in front of my freshly printed laser cut, ready and raring to assemble. As I looked down at my laser cut board, a wave of dread rushed over me. I'd printed the whole design the wrong way around. Hours worth of work down the drain. Now, as you can imagine, as an architecture student, this is basically the end of the world. Um, so I go into full panic mode. It then takes far too much time and the help of my friends to realize that actually, I'm just sleep deprived and I was looking at the board upside down. So we completed our projects on time with a little bit of collaboration and in true sub student fashion, we are presenting the same day on no sleep. Not exactly how I saw my 21st birthday working out, but anyhow. So we're sitting in the gallery listening to presentation after presentation, critique after critique, and my eyes start to slowly close. Next thing I know, I'm getting a harsh kit to my back. My friends have been, call I've been called to speak, and my friends have been gently trying to wake me up unsuccessfully. I step up and begin to talk. Once I've finished, I'm bemused by the positive response. I return to my seat and turn to my friends. I was in autopilot mode that whole time and have no idea about what I said. Was I making any sense? My friends replied that I'd spoke as if I'd rehearsed it. Because when you're forced to develop those skills in presenting, and when you're passionate about your profession, speaking about it becomes like muscle memory. We as design students have learned to fight when we truly believe in a concept and to humbly concede when we are shown a more successful approach. But most importantly, and this is my, my favorite part about the beautiful world of architecture, is that we have learned to collaborate. The sharing of ideas and knowledge and productively working to improve our field is what sets us apart from so many other industries. It is this aspect that my friends and I have spent a lot of our time at uni fighting to save, and it is this collaboration which I will cherish most about my time at university. Learning to truly understand others' approach to design, improving your own in the process, and learning how to manage criticism when it can feel so personal makes us far stronger as designers. Thank you. I'm delighted now to be able to congratulate, as a group, all of you who have graduated today. You can feel proud of what you've achieved, and I urge you once again to remember those who helped you along the way. We've mentioned family, friends, colleagues, but I don't think we've given enough attention to the fine staff of this world-class university. I think you will want to join with me in applauding those staff who have supported you throughout your studies leading to today. I wish you every success as you enter this new stage of your life. As graduates of the University of Adelaide, you're also its alumni and its ambassadors in the world. Over the years since this university was established, its alumni have made enormous contributions to the community, both here and all around the globe. 
Today, you joined this community of over 150,000 alumni who can be found in more than 147 countries of the world. We have 21 global alumni networks, including eight international networks. I hope you'll give some thought to joining one of those alumni networks. Let me now thank the mace bearer, Leon McCullen, and also our valedictorian, Eleanor Hughes, and all who assisted in the organization and running of today's ceremony. Could I ask all of the graduates just for a moment to remain seated while I invite everybody else who comfortably can to stand and in a final round of applause, let's congratulate those who graduated today. Would the audience please remain standing? And I ask the graduates please now to stand for the academic recession. Once the academic recession has left the hall, I ask our guests to remain in their place and the staff of the university will help them to exit the hall. I now declare this congregation adjourned. <laughs>